Magandang araw mga netizens. So ngayon, pag-aaral natin ng Dubai model in the hopes of deriving an expression for heat capacity. So on the Dubai model natin, this just simplifies the phonon dispersion. Again, the phonon dispersion is yung omega. Wait, copy natin yung aking pen. The phonon dispersion is omega versus k relationship. So sa Dubai model, ang nangyari is nanging linear lang yung relationship natin. So originally, a real phonon spectrum is composed of curved lines. Ang Dubai approximation natin, ginagawa natin, straight lang siya. Line lang siya. Omega is equal to V and K. Where V and, V and here is your speed of sound in the material. So this just linearizes your phonon frequency. So since there are only a finite number of phonon modes or a way our lattice can vibrate in a crystal, and this is only, uh, this is bound by the number of primitive cells in the material, or basically, kasi meron lang tayong finite number of atoms in our crystal, parang mangyari is never kang magkakaroon ng frequency, ng vibration, na mas mataas than that of your, um, than that of the number of atoms in your crystal. Parang nakita natin dito sa gif na to, sa magalaw. yung maximum frequency natin would be just due to the yung paggalaw nitong adjacent atoms na to. If we have a higher frequency wave, makita natin same lang na may information na nabibigay niya than dun sa smaller or longer wavelength wave natin. So due to that, we can define a Debye wave number KD. The Debye wave number is just a cut-off wave number that we consider for the Debye model. Otherwise, phonons in the Debye model don't have wave numbers above this value. So, ito na yung pinakamataas na wave number na pwede natin makuha for a phonon. The Debye wave number will just be equal to 6 pi squared times n over v raised to 1 third. From the Debye model, we know that omega is equal to v and k. We can then get the frequency from the Debye wave number, we call that a Debye frequency omega d, as the following, omega is equal to v naught, where v naught is the velocity of sound in the material, and yung k natin, the Debye wave number, is, is yung kd. The Debye frequency is just approximately the uh, maximum frequency of lattice vibrations, or the highest phonon mode for our material. Ito yung pinaka mataas na vibration na pwedeng ma-assume ng isang phonon natin for that material. That's the Debye frequency. That's the cut-off frequency. Since um, lattice vibrations is related to thermal energy and thermal energy is related to temperature, we can define what we call the Debye temperature. The Debye temperature is just the temperature of the crystal's highest mode of vibration. It comes from this one. We know that thermal energy can be quantified by KBT. And alam natin ang energy rin ng isang... Um, quasi-particle is equal to h bar omega. Isolating temperature, we have T is equal to h bar omega over Kb. Or, the Debye temperature, theta D, is equal to h bar omega D over Kb, where h bar is your reduced Planck's constant, and Kb, this is your reduced h, and Kb is your Boltzmann's constant. Omega, again, is your Debye frequency. The Debye temperature is a uh, material property. Uh, define, uh, depende yan sa material kung anong Debye temperature nila. And this is important when we're determining the uh, heat capacity of your material, as we'll see later. Now, we also define the phonon density of states. The phonon density of states is the number of phonon modes k per unit frequency interval omega k. Or basically, ito lang sinasabi natin is kung ilang phonons ang merong vibration na ganun ang frequency. It is similar to our previous density of states, yung electron density of states natin. Basically, binabilang lang natin kung ilang electrons or ilang phonons ang merong energy na ganito yung kanyang vibration. So, for the Debye model, the uh, phonon density of states is defined 
by this equation, g is equal to 3 v omega squared over 2 pi squared v naught cube, where v is the volume of the crystal, and v naught is the speed of sound, which can be obtained from the longitudinal and transverse speeds of sound. Above the Debye temperature, since ito na yung cutoff natin sa, phone, sa Debye model natin, na-assume natin na wala ng phonons above that regime for the Debye model. So, graphing that, we'll get ito. So, basically, ginagraph lang natin kung ilang phonons ang merong frequency. So, ito yung number of phonons. And ito yung frequency of the phonon. So, from the Debye, uh, from the uh, phonon density of states, from the Debye model, we'll see that increasing the frequency of the phonon increases the number of phonons that we have. And when we compare this to the real phonon density of states of a material, uh, we can see that there is a good, there's a good agreement in the low frequency regime for our material, which makes uh, the Debye model sufficient in describing the low temperature heat capacity or the low frequency heat capacity of your material. And also, makita natin that the area under this two uh, density of state na graphs is equal. So, just take my word over it. They are equal. And, for, for, so, yun. Equal sila. So, since, and due to this, uh, makita natin that the Debye model can be useful as an approximation for uh, determining the heat capacity of our material, especially at low and high temperatures. <laughs> Intermediate meron ang fail siya. Now, let's go to our heat capacity. The heat capacity is the measure of the ability with which a substance can store heat. From your MATE 101, you know that this is just um, energy, change in energy with respect to change in temperature or C is equal to DE over DT. We also have your specific heat, where this is just um, a material property that is just the heat capacity per unit mass of your material. Meron din tayong molar heat capacity, yun naman is heat capacity per moles of material. The heat capacity, and uh, in extension, the specific heat in the molar heat capacity of a material is closely related to our phonons. Heating of solids will increase the lattice vibrations in our material, which will translate that there will be more phonon vibration or phonons or vibration modes available to our material. Then, a measure of heat energy received by a solid is therefore uh, the change in the total energy carried by our lattice vibrations. So, yung change in the energy of your crystal will just be the change in the total energy carried by yung vibrations ng phonons natin. And alam natin pag tumaas yung temperature mo, parang tumataas din yung heat energy inside your material. Kaya dito na pupunta yung, dito pumapatsak si heat capacity. So, to get heat capacity, first we have to have an expression for uh, total energy, total heat energy contained in the material. The total energy in a uh, crystal due to phonons can be just expressed as this one. This equation this is just a fancy equation or a fancy way of expressing the total number, total number of phonons times yung energy of each phonon. So formally, that will just be the integral from 0 to infinity of n omega, where, where n omega is the t number of phonons for a, given, uh, for a given frequency. g omega is the phonon density of states at frequency omega. h bar omega is the energy of that phonon. And d omega is just the integration uh, yung nasa dulo, pag nag-integrate tayo. So integrating this expression, incorporating the um, expressions for the by temperature, the by frequency, and so on, we get that the heat capacity is equal to this mm, complicated expression, which I won't read anymore. Just pause it here and look at it. Makita natin, X. Ito siya. 
But we don't usually need this. Uh, hindi natin siya masyadong concern. Ang mas concern natin dito sa expression na to is yung reducing cases niya. One reducing case for the heat capacity is at sufficiently high temperatures. At sufficiently high temperatures is when your KBT is much great, uh, greater than H bar omega D. Or your temperature is greater than your Debye temperature. When your temperature is greater than your Debye temperature, we'll see that this expression here just reduces to ito, E is equal to 3 and KBT. So since we know that C is equal to DE over DT or the differential of this expression with respect to T, D over DT of 3 and KBT, alam natin that the a derivative of x is just a constant, and kb, we'll get that the heat capacity is equal to 3 and kb. And this is actually empirically shown that any Dulong Petit. This is the Dulong Petit law. And what the Dulong Petit law says is that the heat capacity, the constant volume heat capacity of a material, of any solid material, is just equal to 3 and kb. And at sufficiently high temperatures, the heat capacity of all materials approximates the same value. Oh, solid materials approximates this same value, 3 and kb. Meanwhile, for low temperatures, T is much, much less than your uh, Debye temperature. So this is usually at the single digits to a low double digits na Kelvin. The heat capacity is not constant anymore, but rather it becomes a... Uh, proportional to T cubed. So, ito yung magiging expression natin for heat capacity. Now, uh, looking at the um, experimental heat capacity of some materials at different temperatures, the figure shows that the Debye model is in good agreement with experimental expressions both at low temperatures. So, dito nakita nila at low temperatures, the heat capacity of a material does change with uh, the cube of temperature and at high temperatures this is actually more relevant to us at high temperatures that your heat capacity uh, approximates 3 and kb for almost all solid materials so we see that the Debye model is a sufficient approximation good enough to get the heat capacity of our materials at low and high temperature usually young kailangan na naman nating regime is usually medyo high na, na temperature. Now, let's just comment on the electronic contribution to the heat capacity or the contribution of electrons to the heat capacity. In conducting materials, uh, free electrons can also absorb uh, thermal energy, increasing the heat capacity. But, but, since electrons are much, much less in mass, they are about uh, magnitude, mga 10,000 times less in mass than your uh, nuclei, 10,000 times less than the mass, ang nangyari is that their contribution to the heat capacity is very, very small. So we usually, uh, the electronic contribution to the heat capacity only actually affects our materials at extremely low temperatures, where not many photon modes are activated. At really high temperatures, the contribution of electrons to the heat capacity is very, very small that we usually just ignore it. And with that, I'll end this uh, video lecture. So thank you and uh, hope you all have a wonderful day.